Welcome to Johnny and Brodsky with your hosts, Johnny Kim and Brandon Brodsky. All right, this is Johnny Kim. I'm a lifestyle and business consultant. And I'm Brandon Brodsky. I'm a CTO and founder of my business, Brodsky LLC. All right, today let's, let's talk about personal branding. Like what it is, who cares, what are the benefits? Sure. I mean, to me, personal branding is just working on yourself, making yourself more confident, making yourself into a better person, and letting other people know that. Letting other people know how uh, you're amazing. Yeah. And you could apply this to like business, and you could apply this to your like a personal self kind of a thing, right? Oh, it's, it's everything. I mean, it's everything from the job you're going to provide to people, like what are their, whether those personal services might be bookkeeping, whether it might be making a website, whether it be consulting, it could be anything. And it can also be uh, other stuff, like even the way you dress, how it goes into it. Yeah, it's about communicating. Is it, communi- is it about co- communicating who you are, or is it about communicating I'm the shit? It could be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the real What's answer. The, because like people have certain goals, right? With personal branding, they want to say, Oh, I want to put the best, my best self out there. And other people say, I want to put my ideal self that I'm not there yet, but I'll just have this like persona or I'll have this kind of like this mask until I get there. I think that's when like the idea of fake it till you make it really comes in. Yeah. You have this vision of who you want to be and you have this like super you that you're trying to get to. You have to believe you're already there in order to actually get there. It's this interesting philosophy. Yeah. If you pretend to be that person that you want to be, eventually it's not going to be pretend anymore. It's going to be you. It will become reality. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've done this uh, many times uh, with my business. I mean, maybe I took on a project uh, that I didn't 100% know how to do. And over the years, I've probably done a 400, 450 projects over the past eight years. And guaranteed, I didn't know how to do many of them. Uh, or not many, but there, there were a few uh, that had key key points where I had no idea how to do that, maybe database structure, or uh, maybe it was a framework I've never worked with. But I always had the confidence that I can for sure figure this out. And so tell the clients, yeah, I can do that, no problem knowing that maybe I would have some hiccups. I was going to make mistakes. I was going to have uh, problems along the way, but every mistake I made, every problem I solved, made myself into a better me. So it's about growing yourself and then that'll lead to growing your brand. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So it's, without that, you're not getting, your personal branding is probably gonna be shit, right? Sure. I mean, yeah, it starts with within. It's all. It's all mind. Yeah. Now, there's some things you can do that are more tangible than just the philosophy of this, and it starts with maybe a LinkedIn profile, uh, updating that, making it look nice with maybe some references that you have some friends write or uh, other colleagues in your business. Uh, also, maybe making a resume, making a resume that looks really nice, getting it printed on really nice paper going all out for me because I'm in the design industry I did my resume and I made it look spectacular I made sure to have a picture of myself wearing like a suit and a tie and I wrote a nice little cover letter and I photoshopped this and did like graphs of all my skills and I really make it look very unique yeah professional unique it's absolutely everything you you have to make it look professional that's like a no-brainer and you want to be able to stick out. Chances are if you're applying for a job uh, or any any position, you're not going to be the only person they're evaluating. In fact, they could be evaluating literally hundreds of people, some of the big companies. And you need to find ways, creative ways, where you can imagine maybe uh, that you could be the only one doing a certain thing. Yeah. Do you know why I think most people suck at personal branding? It's because I think it's because they don't have a, have an identity. They don't you know have an identity. Yeah, what, they don't what, what like, do like they don't know who they are. 
They don't have a vision. They don't have a specific. Sure. You know what I mean? A strong foundation. Or maybe they don't know what they want. Exactly. Maybe they I think just they lost. Yeah. Yeah, vision, vision is absolutely a huge part of this. Yeah, without that vision, it's like, what's, the, it's like, you don't have the why behind your personal branding, right? Sure. You're just like some, just this thing without a purpose. Understanding that specialization that you're going to, that you're going to hold. Yeah. That focus that you're going to be the best at whatever you are. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have like years and years and years of schooling or tons and tons of money. You just need to have that vision of what you want to be and work towards that. And it's going to be this niche area where you're not going to have the competition you think you are. Yeah. I don't think competition matters once you really, once you really like craft and really hone that identity. Sure. Right. It's just you. And then they'll see like the passion and they'll see like it's congruent Mm -hmm. and it's genuine. Right. And they might've seen other versions of you, but you're, you're probably a lot more clear. And that's probably the difference that they'll see. Sure. You know what I mean? There's a lot of web developers out there, but since you have like a very strong identity and a strong brand, right? That's what separates you between others, the web developers that does exactly the same thing. I think my biggest, my biggest strength with my career has been my confidence. I've always known I'm going to be the best. I'm going to provide the best. And I've used... One part of my personal branding is no matter where someone goes to get a website, they might get the same website that I'll, I'll produce. They might get the same services, but guaranteed they won't get another brand in. There is no chance. Exactly. Because I'm, I'm one of a kind. Yeah, you're you also know, forming relationships, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of oh, like, yeah. it's kind of like dating. It's like, yeah. it's like yeah. you, you're, you're selling yourself at the same time and this relationship that you're going to form. Like, is this somebody who I want to deal with? It is funny how the overlaps of business and dating, there's just so many. You have the key attraction that's there. You have uh, certain things that make you look more valuable. Exactly. And then you, and, and then you build a trust. Oh, yeah. It's, right? Everything in dating is the same as business. And it's oftentimes when I'm explaining this, I compare it. I compare it. It's exactly. really a funny thing. It is. There's, I mean, the first step of any relationship is uh, I don't know building trust making sure that person is who you want to work with uh, understanding that they're high quality they're not going to screw you over just as in a relationship you don't want a girl to go and cheat on you you want someone that's gonna be trustworthy you don't want a, a girl that can I don't know take advantage of you exactly just as when you're hiring someone you don't want that person to take advantage of you mm-hmm so it's it's a good segue because you know in personal branding, people will probably ask, what traits are high value and what traits traits will devalue you. Sure. And it's the same thing with dating, right? Yeah. So it, it's funny how the over app too. It's it's actually a kind of interesting thing when I'm evaluating people to work with. Sometimes I I do evaluate who they choose to date. Now if they are dating a girl that just looks like she doesn't take care of herself and she doesn't hold herself well, she doesn't act professionally, it could be a good sign that this person doesn't really take their thought. It's a reflection. It absolutely is. I mean, it's who they choose to spend a majority of their time together with. And it also shows what kind of confidence they have, and et cetera. Exactly. So what, what like, let's say, top five traits are like universal like values that you would look for like maybe if they people who they associate with so it's like pre-selection in, in right? the, like an employee or a colleague to work with uh maybe like a business like a like a client like you would see a client and or okay. you would or you're the client and you're trying to sell sell your product to that somebody else so i mean the first thing i really look for with this is, is i look for red flags i try to find i actually wrote a interesting uh, post on this on my blog it's thebrodsky.com and I wrote about red flags and clients and various things that are very obvious and one thing that comes up all the time for, for my business is I'll get calls and someone will call and they're panicking like oh I really need a new web developer my last three guys disappeared on me 
And at, when I first started, I was thinking, oh, wow, that's great. Like, this is an opportunity for me to really shine. <laughs> but the more times I worked with these people, I realized there's a reason why those people disappeared. People tend not to just disappear, especially when there's money involved. People want to work with other people. Now, of course, there's things that happen. I can't judge everything. Mm -hmm. And it's really a good determiner on if there's a problem with the client, not necessarily the people they're hiring. Exactly. To the point where someone is just willing to just completely disappear on them. Just peace, gone. Yeah, I mean, they're getting paid and all that. It's not like they're doing sure. it for free and taking yeah. anything out of it. So you know right off the bat, that's a red flag, because they're now, they're not, uh, they're not working well with others. Yeah. And people that are probably similar to you, because you're, you're in the same career. Another, another red flag would be the, the people that uh, are very egotistical. I think ego is a huge problem in, in business and in any relationship, really. When people think of only themselves and only how they can benefit themselves and they'll do anything to put anyone else down, mm -hmm. I just don't think that's a, a really a sign of an educated person. It's not someone I would want to work with. Yeah, and that's the biggest part. Like, putting other people down. Sure. That's, like, very, yeah, low value kind of a thing. Like, it's okay to, like, take care of yourself and focus on yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But once you, like, have to, like, start putting other people down to put yourself up, that's not really a quality that you want. Oh, it's, it's just not a quality of a high, highly educated person. Yeah. Or a person who comes from, like, a place of abundance, right? Sure. Like, if, you, if you're, like, uh, somebody who is highly capable and who has many resources, why would you need to put down others, right? They're more likely to you help others up. You shouldn't. It's not quality of a leader. A leader really should be uplifting everyone. So um, now ego, I, I also want to add kind of like a big asterisk to this. I think ego is also a huge strength at times. I think you should be very proud to be who you are. You should be very confident in what you do, but not to the point where you're putting other people down. So yeah, just want to want to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. Another, another another red flag would be uh, people that are overly cautious. Like I get this a lot with, with startups. Uh, they'll come to me with, with an idea. And they'll say, uh, could you please sign an NDA? I need you to sign this NDA and then we need you to make sure you don't tell anybody about this. They're just super worried that someone's going to screw them over. And I understand this. I do understand why people sign NDAs. I understand the law behind this. And if there's maybe a lawyer listening to this conversation, they're <laughs> probably going to argue a little bit to this. But these people that want you to sign an NDA and they make it super important, it's just a joke. Yeah. Like they're they're and worried. The behind it. They're worried that I'm going to steal their idea more than they're worried about finding someone good to help them I with know. that idea. And even if it, if like people who are like that scared of their idea being stolen, mm -hmm. it's probably a shitty idea if someone could copy their idea like immediately <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? If it's sure. that, that simple of an idea, it's probably shit. I don't shit. know if that's necessarily true, but yeah. It, it's kind of a, it's a weird thing for, for my field because I think uh, people don't really understand really what developers do. Yeah. They, they think of us as magicians we just poof we have an application coded and really it's it's not like that applications could take months years to to create you have to code everything it's not like building a building let's say someone came up to you and said hey i have an idea for this awesome new skyscraper you're not going to worry that someone's going to steal their idea it's a skyscraper after all it takes investment it takes years of work chances are they're not going to be able to just duplicate that skyscraper just because they had a quote-unquote awesome idea mm -hmm. um what's an, i mean what's another red flag that you can think of i could think of like a few things not red flags but like something that you could work on the other side it's like something that you should possess or something sure. you should look for that's like green flags okay like <clears throat> so who who they're associated with oh will be huge yeah right? If they work, and that will that builds trust and it builds credibility, right? They probably look at your website and they see that you work with all these things, 
and that alone probably gave you like high value, right? If you got rid of sure. that, and you just you just had this one website where you're like, I could yeah. do this. It really it really is funny. People care about more who you've worked with uh, rather than maybe what you've done. Exactly, or what you're capable of. You could be like, I am the expert in this. Sure. But if you let's say, but I haven't worked with anybody. Sorry. Yeah, then they'll it, probably just go to that nothing. shitty guy you know, who worked with like NASA. It, it really is funny. I, I, I worked with uh, my first big name that I worked with was Howie Mandel. And this was the first uh, person slash company that I worked with that most people have heard of because of like deal or no deal and yeah. things like that. Well, that's huge. And it was funny. It was funny because... Um, <clears throat> It was funny because we would uh, sell this as like we did Howie Mandel's website. No, truthfully, this website was just as high quality as maybe the next like website that we did for a no name company, like a small mom and shop, uh-huh. mom and pop. But people have heard it, so now they all of a sudden I have this huge wow! This is amazing. It's really kind of funny how the how sales works that way that's how dating works too it is yeah, like if you really if you see pictures of a dude with a bunch of girls or not a bunch of girls but with like very like let's say attractive girls mm-hmm. your value goes up yeah like even if they don't want to admit it you know if they're not conscious of it it's like yeah. hardwired it's if you're with a bunch of hot girls Girls yeah. want you more, and, and guys want to be yeah. you more. It's almost like a safe. Yeah. It's like a safety net too. It's like, oh, if she's willing to go out with him, then he must be a cool guy, sure. or he must have some sort of value that's that mm-hmm. I can't see right now. Um, I think an, another another good point for things to look for in people to work with would be passion. This is like one of the hardest things to do. Now, I consider myself very passionate about what I do. I I enjoy my job as if it was my hobby. I, people ask me what my hobby is. Like, oh, do you have any other hobbies? And it's hard for me to think of anything other than my business, other than like web development, web design, entrepreneurship. I just love it so much. I have this huge passion. Now, if you can find that in someone else, guaranteed, guaranteed, whether they don't, they don't have any experience whatsoever, if they have a passion for whatever they're they're applying for they're going to be the best employee you can ask for and that's why it's so important to qualify them oh yeah yeah qualifying is like something that a lot of not a lot of people like know about sure or they don't know how to qualify properly yeah or they don't know really what to look for maybe exactly that's how to look for that passion exactly the the way we look for passion maybe is if they've done things on their spare time Mm -hmm. so for web development specifically there's a few different uh, platforms. There's like GitHub, which is something that people submit open source software to. And if people have a large GitHub uh, profile with a lot of uh, repos in it, it really shows that they have a lot of passion for this. Other things, like there's a website called Stack Overflow where people answer questions for another. It's like almost like a form. Uh, people post a question and then a bunch of people respond to it. And then they go back and forth and there's like a point system it's pretty elaborate, but if people are involved in that, you can tell they're they're involved with it with a semi high score. You can definitely tell that this person actually cares about what they do. Yeah, they care about it enough to give up some time, their personal time, aside from money, aside from anything else, and do things just to help the greater like community on the web. And I'm sure with with any career, you can find some overlap with this. Um, maybe for, for your your stuff with a uh, consulting or uh, psychology, maybe if they have a lot of nonprofit uh, background, maybe helping people that can't afford a therapist, donating need some hours. I think that kind of person would be a great person to work with. Definitely. Imagine imagine if they're getting paid to do something they love to do anyway. That it's not going to be work for them. Yeah. They're going to be a pleasure to, to be around. Yeah. And asking those qualifying questions. Like, did I tell you the what, how, and why method? I don't think so. It's, so this is like for dating too, but mm-hmm. it's like what got you into that? And then how do you do what, that what you do? Sure. And why do you do it? So that kind of tells you like exactly 
kind of like the way they think and the reason, the purpose behind it. So if you relate to, to a career, I guess, why why are they doing the career they're in? Exactly. Is, is it for to pay bills? Mm-hmm. Or is it to because they love what they do? I mean, there's, there's probably a lot of things that you can really think about. Exactly. And the why is pretty important, if, especially if you're looking for passion. Sure. Right? It's not just because, like, hey, I'm really good at what I do. That's, like, one reason. Like, mm-hmm. what, like, how, maybe. But, like, the why behind it, like, why are you really doing this? Like, what, what's, like, really, what puts that fire in you? Sure. And another area would be whether they finish things. There's a lot of people who have all, like, great ideas. Maybe they have passion for things. Yeah. But have they actually finished projects? Do they have anything, like, finished on their resume? Or is it just a bunch of things they started, they didn't complete? Uh, I, I think that college is a good example of this. People who finished college versus people who dropped out. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that college is by all, like, the all-important thing. Uh, there's a lot of evidence for people that are very successful that didn't finish college that dropped out. Like, maybe uh, Mark Zuckerberg or Steve Jobs, mm-hmm. Bill Gates. The list goes on. But guarantee there's a much larger list of people that actually finish school and have become even more successful in many ways. Yeah. And it also, for those examples, they did finish things. They did finish different tasks to build those businesses. Just not college. Now on the everyday people that you meet for maybe that are applying for jobs, they didn't finish college. What that tells me as uh, someone who's going to maybe hire them would be that, uh, okay, they're, there's something wrong. Like, why did they finish? Like, the, they they didn't finish for maybe various reasons, and I'm going to be thinking of these. Versus that thought's never in my mind if I know they have. Mm-hmm. Another good thing is if they're still in school. I, I don't mind that. I think if they're working towards a goal, they're working towards a goal, and I think that's another good evidence. It's a evidence of uh, following up. Is the follow-through, just, just as any sport. Dedication, pretty much follow through is important and to continue going down that path to get to your end goal Mm -hmm. to become your vision of who you want to be yeah Uh, what else what else do you think is a good thing that people look for um probably like leadership you know is this person a good leader i I can go both ways on this because maybe maybe you don't you don't need to be a leader. Yeah. I think it depends on the job, right? I guess so. I think if you're finding someone that is going to be a manager, uh-huh. someone you want to maybe take your place on certain things, like a, a vice president or something, as a business grows, I hope to replace certain things that I do on my own with someone else. And I think leadership is, is a great thing to find. But you do have people you need that, that are quite good at... Maybe grunts, or maybe they're just not good at leadership. They yeah. Can still, they can still be great people to work with. Yeah. Creatives are a great example of this. So they're more like tools. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, they, they're needed. They're, yeah. I, I think Somebody tool, who has like... like... Tools is a little bit of... <laughs> it's kind of a... Sheeps. Yeah. It, it, I think it's kind of a demeaning way of, of calling them, but... Yeah. They, they are a central part of the team. They're, and just because they don't have those leadership skills, I don't think makes them really a bad thing it just depends on what they're doing exactly they, they could be like the best coder sure ever sure but they might not have that leadership skill but I, they don't they might not need it because they're just they could be work as a coder and that's sure it. i um i think the more the more you talk to me the, the more you can see I, I classify different people and i i sort of make assumptions on who they are sometimes on based off what they do and one of the things, an assumption that I make, and of course there's always exceptions to these rules, are creative people. So in my industry, like graphic designers, uh, people that make their, your logo, banners, etc., they're very creative. They and they don't, they wouldn't want to be leaders. They they don't want to oversee someone else. They don't want to be above someone else. They want to create some art. They want to be really good at what they yeah. do. It's the same thing with like the therapy world. Yeah, Not a lot of people want to be business people or sure. they don't want to take that role you know what i mean they just want to help people and that's it i think you can do that with even even outside of therapy to be more broad just medical in general yeah uh, 
not just therapy doctors mm -hmm. i think you don't really you go doctors go through all this training like tw 12 years of school and they don't take a single business course and it's just not what they're they're good at it's not what they know how to do they know how to help people they know how to make the body uh be finely tuned etc yeah they're kind of not like more of a leader though because you know there's so many people work working underneath him like he has to like delegate tasks to nurses i think that's an like that. assumption though i think that's some doctors yeah i'm sure there's a lot of doctors or that are really shitty at it yeah that's just not their <laughs> yeah. skill but th that's like part of their job i think though sure you know what i mean Hope and then eventually they'll like get used to it but they'll probably be still shitty at it <laughs> maybe maybe or maybe someone some of them just are natural leaders yeah what do you think makes a good leader? Well, there's a lot of things. Like, I think first and foremost, it starts with a, a person who has a specific vision for the company or for themselves and mm -hmm. who has a strong identity. Like, that's like the, I think that's the foundation of a good leader. They understand themselves. Yeah, they, understand, they need to understand themselves. Sure. And they need to work on themselves before they can like, start leading others or start you know, like, giving. Sure. You know what I mean? That's what leadership is. You're just kind of giving, you're delegating, you're managing, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can't do all of that within just yourself, like how can you do that without anyone else? Sure. I think a leader has to have mastered everything that he's leading. Yeah. So in, in my business, I, I, had, I had started off as maybe delegating to people and I didn't know how to do it. Like I, I didn't know... Um, how do you do HTML, for example, at first? Mm -hmm. Maybe the basics. And I would hire someone to do that HTML for me. And over time, I I had to fix maybe a pixel, be able to align it just perfectly. And I just was like, okay, I'm just going to figure out how to do this myself. I figured out how to do that one little task, and then one more, and one more, and a few years go by. And I ended up being uh, better than the people I'm hiring. So I just didn't need them. And I ran my business completely by myself. I learned how to do all these skills. Now, as my as my business grows a bit and we start getting uh, bigger clients that require more hours, it's just not possible yeah. to do it all myself. And I've had to delegate some of those tasks. Which makes my situation kind of cool. Is I spent years mastering each part of these parts of the business. Whether it be... Uh, the design part, like with Photoshop, or whether it be the developing side with front end and back end, and then with the entrepreneur side for business development, sales, etc. I can't say that I'm better than all my team because I work with some amazing people. And I think that's okay. I think that they should be good, but I have spent time on mastering each part of this. So they can understand what's going wrong. I think there's also, if you can't master everything you do in your business, I think it's also important to come from a place of curiosity at the same time. Sure. Like if there's something like, let's say, legal issues, you can't be a lawyer. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't master law or you can't be a lawyer also. But knowing you, you like, what, where, like what resources are out there. So let's say you have a, specific, like a huge company and you need more of, more of a legal team. As long as you know where to get that expertise. Sure. You know what I mean? So you could reach out to consultants. You could reach out to uh, lawyers to get some legal work done, depending on what you need done. Also, that's like also like important of delegating tasks, right? Like, who's the best for this specific job right now? Because let's say something comes up and you, you're, this is something that's not in your field. Mm -hmm. Like, who can? what resource do I have to reach out? You know, in... in uh... I believe it was either the 20s or 30s, uh, Henry Ford uh, sued a guy for uh, saying some some stuff about him, saying that he's not, like, uh, what's the word? It's, like, uh, basically he, he can't think for himself or he's, he doesn't uh, take other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. And he's brought to court and... And they're interviewing him, and they're asking him all these these questions to try to prove him wrong. And they're asking how many soldiers were in this war, how many people, and he would get some of them right. And then he says, "Hey, these are pointless questions. If I need advice on something, 
I just go to my, my people that I ask, my board of advisors, and I say, hey, I need this information. Could you go find it? And they come back to me with the answer. I don't need to be the expert. I have people that I hire for this. Yeah. And it's a really good way of showing that this leader doesn't need to know everything. He just needs to know how to find that information. And in the 30s, of course, they didn't have Google, but he had advisors yeah. that could go and do that hours and hours of research to find out that answer. Now, if you relate this to uh, business and maybe law, maybe you don't understand uh, how to handle a certain case. You can always consult a lawyer. Mm -hmm. and I, think, I think that's a great option if you have the means to do so. But it's also a great way to just figure out how to research on your own as well. I think another, another good quality for a leader would be uh, to be pleasant to work with. I think this is something that a lot of people uh, don't understand. If you look at the history of the world, dictators haven't lasted very long mm -hmm. in most cases. I mean, yeah. There's, of course, of course cases where they uh, don't get overthrown for years and the people live horribly. Yeah. But in more cases than none, that dictator is thrown out. There's a whole big rebellion mm -hmm. or they have to do outrageous things like keep keep the people in the dark by not giving them access to the internet and not giving them access to education. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to do. Or you can be inviting, work as a team, as a democracy. Look at, look at ours where our president actually has to get elected. Now, whether you like our president or not, it's a whole nother, another debate. We did choose him. And he's not this big evil guy that is going to like ruin the world. We chose him. And guaranteed what you may say about him, what, what you might feel about his decisions, like with Obamacare or whatever, even if you don't like Obamacare, Obamacare isn't like ruining your life. Yeah. It's, it's not a, the biggest biggest deal versus someone coming in and saying, hey, I'm not going to allow you to uh, go on the internet and go on Google to search the meaning of democracy. I think it comes kind of down to trust, right? That's sure. like the core of the whole thing. Like if you look at like Steve Jobs, he was like a great leader of Apple. Like he kind of like saved Apple from many, many times and things like that, right? So, but not, he wasn't like the best, most nicest person out there, right? Sure. So it's pretty authoritarian. Yeah, he was very authoritarian, but it was, he was a decent. He was a very good leader. He because he had a specific thing. He had a specific vision and all of that. Sure. But he he also created trust through his actions, right? He did. He uh, he's a very specific case. I think. I mean, he's not the leader that I don't think I don't I wouldn't want to be him. I I think Steve Jobs accomplished amazing things and there's a lot of qualities that i look up to yeah but the reality is is i think i would want my team to enjoy working with me a little bit more i think that's more fun for everyone and i think that when you don't put stress on people you really get a better product at the end of the day i think some stress is good some like some push you sure. know getting them out of their comfort zone that's what like really steve jobs did right Mm -hmm. He really pushed them out of their comfort zone. I was like, this is impossible, but let's try it. Uh, I mean, stress is a whole other topic. Yeah. I, I think that that's for another yeah, that's another right. day. But, <laughs> right. but re regardless, I, I think that I think we're on the same page with, yeah. with that. And there's obviously many more reasons to be a, a good leader. Mm -hmm. And we should probably do, we should probably do we a should, Yeah, we'll, we'll do the whole just 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 leadership. Just leadership, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, get back to the topic of personal branding. I mean, these are all things to encompass, right? I mean, you have to you have to figure out how you can make yourself into a good yeah. leader, in order to make yourself into a your branding. To you be, have to constantly, really nice. constantly you need to develop yourself. Sure. Constantly work on yourself. And in the same way that a business does, like uh, corporate branding, maybe with Apple or something, where they want to say we're quality, we're the best. You want to do that with yourself. You want, you want people to understand that you are the best at what you do. Exactly, and you have to be flexible. You have to be malleable. 
Because sure. if you just stop and kind of get set in your own way, then you're going to become outdated. Mm-hmm. Right? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think that concludes for today. Yeah, that was a good discussion. It really was. It really was. All right. This is Johnny Kim and Brandon signing out.